What is up my loves? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Lizelle and today's video is going to be yet another first impressions on a foundation that I recently picked up. Those of you who tune into my channel regularly would know that I really enjoy testing out and trying a bunch of different foundations, seeing how they feel on my skin, seeing how they perform, and just giving you guys the lowdown. Before we get on to the actual video, I just want to address the fact that yes, I have braces. I just got them put on yesterday, so I feel very uncomfortable talking right now. It's really weird because I feel no pain. It's just like talking with this in my mouth is something to get used to. So I feel like my mouth is moving really weird. I don't know. You guys tell me. <laughs> so the foundation that I'm going to be testing out today is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I have heard so many people say amazing things about this. This definitely cost a pretty penny, but I had to see what all the hype is about. It's $99 for us here in Australia, and for those of you in the US, it is $64, I believe. Definitely classed as a high-end foundation. So I've just taken it out of the box. I believe there was like a little um, sheet of paper inside that kind of explains the foundation and how to apply it and stuff. I don't know where I put it, which sucks. So I'm just gonna read out what the claims and benefits are online. So it says, capture the glow of perfect skin with this award-winning foundation. Luminous Silk Foundation features an exclusive microfill technology. Its hydrating fluid glides on seamlessly with a silky texture and all day buildable coverage. It says that it is suitable for all skin types, lightweight and long lasting. Uh, it says to apply it with the unique blender brush for a radiant airbrush finish. I personally don't have the specific brush that is meant to be used for this. So I'm going to be testing out the beauty blender and also just a kabuki brush. So from what I can gather, it comes in 15 different shades for us here in Australia. And in the US, you can find 24 different shades of foundation, which I do find interesting that there is like a difference. But in general, that like we always have that issue is that there are less shades available for us here in Australia compared to overseas. To the packaging, as you guys can see, it comes in this beautiful frosted glass that has a cap and of course it comes with a pump, which is awesome. I love foundations that come with pumps. I find they're a lot easier to work with. And for reference, if you guys are wondering, the shade that I was matched to is shade number four. Alrighty, so let's get on to applying the foundation. I'm firstly going to prime half of my face with the too Faced Hangover RX Primer. Also, I just wanted to let you guys know, if you have been watching my channel for a long time, you would know that I recently finished my course of Accutane. And now my oil production has begun again, so my face is no longer like normal to dry. I feel like it's like normal to, like a teensy bit oily. It's definitely not as oily as it was before I started Accutane, but I have oil production again, which is a good thing. So I'm just gonna shake up the bottle. It sounds very watery, which I wasn't expecting because people say that this is very high coverage. So I was expecting it to be a little thicker. I'm just gonna take one pump to the back of my hand. Oh, wow, that is very liquidy. As you guys can see, it's like sliding around. So yeah, very liquidy. I'm gonna take a couple of dots onto my face. We'll just start with that. And I'm gonna take the damp beauty blender and blend it in. It has a, like a teensy bit of scent to it, which kind of like slightly reminds me of sunscreen. I don't know why. As for the shades, I think that we don't really have many of the 0.5 shades which was interesting because I remember being matched to this shade and I was thinking if it was just like half a shade darker, then it might be better. But I figured that if it was a little bit too light, I would be able to, you know, bronze my face up a little. So that is one very thin layer. As you can see, it does give a nice finish, but I can definitely still see like a little bit of my uh, acne scarring poking through. For the most part, I don't really have much acne scarring anymore because it has faded a lot over time, but I'm gonna go in with another little bit of foundation. It's so easy to blend out, especially with the Beauty Blender. I find that it gives a really nice finish, like really airbrushed. As for the shade, I think it might be like a tad bit too, um, like just the teeniest bit too light. Which I mean, if you're basically going to be paying $100 for our foundation, you want it to be spot on. Perhaps it will oxidize throughout the day, we'll have to see. 
I definitely say that it is luminous like I feel like it's giving me that little bit of glow without being too like dewy it's interesting because I was honestly expecting it to be a lot thicker yeah it's not as like full full coverage as I thought it would be all right I'm going to take some dots on this side of my face and I'm going to try out the kabuki brush and see how that goes okay I definitely think I prefer the beauty blender but I feel like I'm kind of biased because I just prefer the Beauty Blender for all my foundations. Because I feel like when I'm spreading this around with this flat top Kubuki brush, it kind of takes away from the coverage a little bit. I've just taken some onto the brush directly rather than dotting it onto my face because I feel like I can get more coverage that way. All right, I have to say that I definitely prefer how it looks when I blend it in with a Beauty Blender. So I'm going to continue to do that on this, this side of my face because I just don't like it with the Kabuki brush. Alrighty, so that is the application process done. I actually really like how it looks on the skin. I do feel like it is a tad bit too light for me, but in saying that, because we don't have as wide of a shade variety as overseas, I did try other shades and the undertone was just way off. So that is why I decided to go with this shade. But in saying that, I think I'm very critical when it comes to the shades, so. It might not look that bad to you guys, I don't know. So far, I'm really liking it. I love the coverage that it's giving. It's like, it's full coverage, but it still lets your skin show through. You can still see a little bit of my imperfections showing through, which personally, I don't mind sometimes, especially on an everyday basis. Like I do like to have coverage, but I also like to have my actual skin showing through. I don't want to be completely flawless. The finish is really beautiful. I actually really love the finish that it gives. Like I said, it is luminous. It gives a little bit of a dewy finish without being too over the top dewy. In terms of the foundation itself, like the formula, I was honestly expecting it to be a lot more thicker than it was. It's definitely a watery foundation. If I just take the pump off, like, I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's already dripping off the pump. Like, it's a very liquidy foundation, which I definitely was not expecting. I was thinking it was going to be very thick and heavy. But so far, I don't feel like it is heavy on the skin. I don't feel like I'm wearing a full face of foundation. With that being said, though, I'm going to go ahead and finish off the rest of my makeup. And then I will check back with you guys once I'm done. Alrighty, guys, I'm back. And as you can see, I did go ahead and finish applying the rest of my makeup. I was able to kind of contour and bronze my face so that the foundation did match my skin tone a little more. I feel like the finish is looking amazing. It's giving me the coverage that I want and I had no issues when it came to applying the rest of my makeup on top. It did go on very easily. I also have to mention that I did set my face with some powder just because I always set my face with a powder. So I feel like this was no exception. Regardless, I'm always gonna set my face. I did use the Astralis Ready Set Go Translucent Finishing Powder, which essentially is just a finely milled translucent powder so it didn't add any coverage or color to my face. So far, so good. I feel like I still have that luminous glow that it did say it was gonna give me. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and continue on with my day. I have a couple of errands to run and I will check back in with you guys for my first update and let you know how it's going. I'm back with my first update, guys. So let's take a look in the mirror. I literally just got home and turned on the camera. So let's see how it's all going. So from what I can see, it's still looking very full coverage, although I am looking a little bit oily already, especially in my T-zone area. But like I said to you guys earlier, I have started producing oil again, which is like a good and bad thing in itself. And I don't know if you guys can see this. I noticed this while I was out at the mall, actually. I passed by a mirror and I was like, what the heck is that? I have these like little dots appearing here. This is the non-primed side by the way, so I don't know if this has something to do with it. But yeah, I've got these little dots just kind of forming around here, which is really strange because I obviously didn't have them before I started applying the foundation. But I'd have to say that it is definitely holding up better on the primed side because it's looking a little less dewy 
than it does on the non-primed side. And I feel like the finish of it looks better on the primed side. I don't know, what do you guys think? So far, so good, guys. It still has its coverage. It's still there. Although, yeah, like I said, I am getting a little bit oily. So it has only been three hours, which I'm surprised that I'm looking as oily as I am. However, I did go out. It was hot. It was humid. So that could be another contributing factor to that. Alrighty, so that is my first update for you guys. I'm going to continue on with my day and I will be back later to give you guys an update. I'm back with an update for you guys. So it has been nearly eight hours since I initially applied the foundation to my face. I feel like it relatively looks the same since my last check-in with you guys. Definitely have to say that the prime side has like held it together better. I don't know if you can tell, but this side is just looking really glowy. Whereas this one's like, dewy if that makes sense so like i don't mind how it's looking on my skin at the moment i would personally just like blot off my t-zone with some blotting papers or something but for the purpose of this first impression i am just going to leave it as is so yeah my thoughts so far are that i'm definitely liking the primed side better it does give that luminosity and that glow but this side i feel the side without the primer is looking a little bit more greasy in terms of like anything moving around, nothing has really shifted. Nothing's moved into my smile lines. I do have like a little bit of foundation caking up around the nose, but I personally feel like that's inevitable when it comes to foundations, especially if you are of an oily skin type. So that's pretty much it for the moment. I will leave you guys for now and I will be back in a couple of hours to do my final check-in on my final thoughts and opinions. All right, I am back for my final update for you guys. I have been wearing the foundation now for 11 hours, which is much longer than I anticipated to wear the foundation for. I wasn't intending on wearing it this long, but here we are. So let's take a look in the mirror. I literally just woke up from the nap, guys. So that's why I look a little bit like disheveled and like, I don't know, I just look like I just woke up from a nap. Okay, there's not much of a change from my last check-in that I did with you guys. It still looks pretty much the same to me. I feel like my face is looking oily for sure. But in saying that this side is looking a lot worse than this side, especially in the T-zone area. I do notice that there is a little bit of creasing going on, like in my smile lines, um, here on my nose. Nothing too crazy though, like pretty standard stuff. So, do I think this is worth the $100 price tag? I'd have to say no, just because I feel like there are other options available, especially from the drugstore that are just as good at a much more affordable cost. So I will have to continue testing this out. Like I do like it, but I don't love it. I'm not absolutely obsessed with it and I don't feel like you guys have to go and get it. I will continue to test it out with different primers and see how it goes. But for the most part, I think it is a good foundation. It's just not one that's like wowed me for now. So that's pretty much it for this first impressions, guys. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below in the comments section. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss any of the other videos I post. Let me know in the comments section if there are any other foundations that you would like me to do first impressions on. And with that being said, I hope you're all having an awesome week and I will catch you all in my next video. Stay glowy.